Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, May 4th, 5.21 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, large caps continue to be in an uptrend, weakening uptrend, though. Uh, even the NASDAQ 100 closed just a hair below the 21-day moving average today, but it's slightly it's basically it's right on it after hours with uh apple being up a percent and a half on earnings uh so large cap uptrend continues avoid uh kre down hard again today uh and commercial real estate check over here on the trend gauge uh leaders neutral uh but i'm about to show six leaders that had nice gaps up and held the gaps today so uh, definitely a stock pickers market. Short term, neutral leaning towards red, as I mentioned, with the NASDAQ 100 right on the 21. The S&P and the Dow got their second close below the 21 today, mid and small caps firmly below. Medium term, looking at the 50-day moving average, still have the large cap indexes above, mid and small below. Same thing with the long-term 200-day moving average, mid and small continue to lag, large cap uh, still holding up fine there. As so far as what happened today, uh, gap down in the morning and really traded in a tight range, but with a downward bias all day and the KRE regional bank sell-off continued over, uh, we've got uh, three stocks down over 33%, another uh, probably dozen down eight to 15%. No confidence at all. Uh, Market appears to be looking to the FDIC or Yellen for some sort of uh, help there, saying they're going to backstop deposits. I would expect a strong short covering rally when that happens, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, after hours, Apple up about a percent and a half. So all the big titans have reported now. Uh, the only serious weakness on that was Tesla. The other one's uh, several doing very well, several middling, uh, but all in all, no concern anymore about a massive market cap stock going to be a big tape bomb hitting the indexes. For the day, read right across the board, our uh, growth proxy RG7, six of them were down more than a percent. And then you had ARK-K, which is uh, one of their stocks. Shopify was up 20% on the day, so it was up 2.8%. The net composite average turns out to be down six tenths of a percent on the day s p gap down a quarter percent ended up down seven tenths nasdaq 100 uh held up better than the s p for most of the day pretty much all day actually down 0.35 percent dow down 0.9 mid caps down 1.7 uh russell down 1.2 global diverse side 60 40 down uh, 0.20 bonds were mixed today. The 30-year uh, yield higher, 10-year uh, flat. The rest of the shorter term uh, yield slightly down. Uh, In-house protection, we were down 0.26 percent. We'll go through the tail of the tape and charts for interest, charts of interest. But let's go right to the S&P 500, and here you can see the gap down. You show the five minute chart, uh, really kind of a tight range, less than a percent. In fact, we're at a year to date low on the uh, on the uh, ATR, uh, the, the daily range of the S&P 500. It's approaching a percent, the average true range. Um, kind of surprising with the market weakness, but I mean, normally tight ranges are associated with bull markets. So, uh, we're, Technically, we're in a uh, the big cap indexes are, you know, above the 50, above the 200. That is bullish. We're uh, well off the lows there. It's uh, definitely the bifurcated bipolar market, as I referred to it uh, over the weekend. Uh, that is, and again, this is centered on uh, government spending trickling through to Federal Reserve policies and then trying to recover from over loose policies by over tightening and bad things happen when you mess with uh, the economic cycle. So it is what it is. We deal with it. It's a reality. So uh, there's the S&P 500 second close below the 21, 21 now rolled over. 
50-day moving average sloping up just about a point a day, same as the 200. We're holding that for now. Uh, we did undercut but then reclaim last Tuesday's lows when it looked like everything was going to hell in a handbasket. And then we had two sharp rallies on the back of Meta and Microsoft earnings to reach a new short-term top. And now we've been down four days in a row since then. So that's the S&P 500. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, basically just a hair below, maybe right on uh, the 21 day moving average, also down four days uh, in a row after a three day rally on the strength of some mega cap earnings reports. Uh, this is, I mean, this looks fine, but uh, you know, seven stocks can't hold up the market forever or can they? We'll see, we'll keep, we keep an eye every day, close eye on uh, those seven charts. They're at the, uh, at the front of uh, what we monitor because we understand and then add the other 18 Titans to them. And between them, you've got the three big cap indexes. Uh, I mentioned the weakness. I showed it uh, Tuesday when we reviewed the Titans on Titan 25 Tuesday, and we continue to monitor that closely. So deteriorating but not breaking down, holding the 313.68 pivot from the breakout on the NASDAQ 100 and also that 315.59 uh, big fib level that we were battling at for three weeks before we undercut it then reclaimed it where uh, we undercut it and reclaimed it again today so uh, today's low is critical uh, we start breaking today's lows don't close back above them the 21 will start rolling over the s p uh, the nasdaq 100 will head to the 50-day moving average along with the nasdaq 100 the dow will start breaking it and will get more defensive Let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see here, undercut reclaimed and closed slightly above the 50-day moving average. That's the red line. Two closes below the 21, which is rolling over now, uh, less than 1.3% from its 200-day moving average. Mid caps, here's the MDY, the mid cap ETF, gap down, closed in the lower third of its range making new one, two, three, four week lows, but not correction lows. IWM uh, didn't undercut the lows from 324, uh, but did undercut 170 in the lows from last week and earlier this week. Uh, so new weekly closing lows on IWM. Of course, we're gonna go to KRE because of uh, the import here. You can see the gap down closed well off its lows. Um, really extended from the moving averages. Uh, let's look at X, uh, um, XLF now. This is what we had been short via FAZ. We took half of this off today uh, when it was just too extended to the downside. We uh, covered half the short for about, a, well, it's not a short technically, it's an inverse ETF long, which is technically short the XLF. Uh, took about an 8% gain on that and the pairs trade for that was Berkshire Hathaway. We took a 1% loss on that uh, as it undercut the 21, but rallied mid-afternoon before fading a little bit into the close. So we closed that uh, pairs trade. Uh, let's move on now to the dollar. Uh, UUP tight range today, back below the declining 21. That's actually healthy for markets and certainly good for precious metals. The VIX got that close that move above that 20 level close above it well off the high though uh, and a first close below the declining 50-day moving average so we're watching this closely also when it gets back above the 20 you're at uh, risk for a big volatility spike um, we'll see what happens with the rest of the regional banks uh, we won't get a volatility spike off of apple earnings as of right now as it continues to trickle higher after hours up about two percent now uh, but tomorrow morning, we've got uh, the NFP government uh, payroll report uh, at 8.30 Eastern time. So that's the last uh, box to be checked for causing uh, volatility this week. We'll, be, we'll see the, what the reaction is to that. Let's go to precious metals right now. Gold up 1.3%, three straight up days. Uh, safe haven. With the banking crisis, gold stocks, same thing. Uh, three up days came up to the top of the range and faded on this big cup and handle uh, that it's forming. Silver SLV uh, up a half percent at the top of its cup and handle. Also, uh, let's go to Bitcoin. 
which had been a safety trade in the past, up 2% today. Uh, nothing spectacular. Let's flip the bonds now. The broad bond index down slightly, pretty wide range today uh, on the bonds. Uh, the TLT, on the other hand, was down a full percent and closed at the low of its range. So uh, reversing the gains of the last two days in price, which means yield, uh, definitely divergent today. Let's go to the 10-year yield, 0TYX slightly 0.22%, uh, sorry, that's the 30-year yield, the 10-year yield, uh, TNX down 1.53% today. Uh, so uh, quite a divergence between the long-term bond and the short, uh, the 10-year bond. And then uh, as you go shorter on the curve, uh, here's the five-year yield, that was down 4% on the day, wow. Didn't realize that. Okay. So that is, uh, let me do double check quick. Yeah, that's all of the ETFs that we check. Uh, for inner asset correlation, let's go to the tail of the tape now. You can pause this to look through it. The stochastics are negative on the indexes, the RG7, uh, the NASI, which is critical. It, it hooked down, hooked back up for a couple days after the gains last week, hooked back down again. Dollar in a downtrend. The down arrow is green because it's actually good for stocks. TN, TNX, T, TYX bonds are range bound right now. Uh, as I said, the VIX over that 20 level, that is a negative for stocks. We're not on the bull or the bear case. Now we're kind of in the middle as we've got um, two closes below for the S&P uh, to kick in the short-term bear case, uh, the NASDAQ hanging on. We'll see how it ends up closing the week. News, as I said, regional banks down hard again. The KRE down 5.5%. These three tickers, put check them on your bingo card. PACW, WAL, and FHN all down 33% or more. Day count down three days now. Third close under the ADMA. Second close under the 21 EMA for the S&P. We've got the farm uh, NFP, the payrolls report the jobs report uh, tomorrow morning before the open. Our expectations are neutral while we're between the 21 and the 50 day. Uh, did break the support level on the S&P. The next level down is the 50 day, which we're still above and we'll bring this into the levels tomorrow. Uh, action tight range all day, as I mentioned. Uh, cloud stocks, XBI, biotech has been bucking the trend of uh, risk Risk on, risk off, and continues uh, to act well. Gold, silver, gold and silver stocks, dollar up slightly, bond yields actually mixed uh, on the day as that changed from uh, early in the day when we went from all up and we ended up mixed. On the downside, KRE led to the downside, semiconductors also, but semiconductors did get a pop uh, with some news that, uh, uh, Microsoft is bankrolling AMD uh, to develop uh, AI chips. So AMD got a little pop on that. We took a small position in AMD off that, see if it continues to work. Uh, but uh, oil's also down again. They just can't get out of their own way. OIH was up, but um, the rest of the ETFs uh, were down. So uh, you can see the focus list here in-house. We added Uber, continues to show really good strength after that gap up. We trimmed FAS and sold uh, the full BRKB part of that pairs trade. So we still have half of the size of FAZ. And as I mentioned, we took a small position in AMD, adjusted beta 1.04. Bottom line of the day, open lower tight range, all day chop. After hours, Apple earnings up one and a half, uh, closer to 2% now. Uh, and we'll see what tomorrow brings and how the week closes. That certainly is, uh, with it being 7% of the S&P and over 10% of the NASDAQ 100, that is certainly a positive for the overall indexes. So let's go check out a few charts now. And I said I had six gaps. Let's take a look at them. We'll start off with race. This is a 21 over 21 member. Very nice move up on volume. Apparently, there is no recession in high dollar Italian automobiles. Let's go to hubs. 
HubSpot gapped up too, closed quite a bit off of its high, uh, big volume breakout of the range. Uh, cloud stocks did well today uh, on the back of that. Shopify also up 24%, was up higher, uh, up on 500%. Look at the massive volume on that. Obviously, this goes on our watch list. Uh, and look at the um, earnings for next year, 280% gain. Now they lost or bare, well, no, they've been making money for a lot, a while, but not much. The last two years have been lean after 2021 earnings that they put up, but uh, let's go to a weekly chart. You can see still a ton of overhead support here, uh, but it goes back uh, over a year now. Uh, it's still there. The market's cognizant of it usually uh, more than a year. It doesn't necessarily factor in. I imagine there's still some stuck longs from over here. We'll provide some sort of a headwind, but we'll be watching this one closely with the volume uh, and the uh, price gain. Lantheus, another 21 over 21 member, up 14% on the day. Very nice, big volume, up over 200%. Sedge, solars have been looking terrible. Uh, Sedge gapped up, but closed at the bottom of the range, was up almost 10% at one point, ended up being up 6.6%. .6 and Shake Shack. I don't know why they can't make money. Looks like they finally will next year, but a nice gap up and close at the top of the range. Shake Shack up 17% on 400% average volume. We'll be keeping a close eye uh, on this one also. Now, one that looked promising early and ended up looking awful was Smelly Melly, Mercado Libre. Uh, initially gapped up near 10%, ended up down 5%. You know, you just never know how the reaction to this earnings were going to be. When I was reading the description of their earnings report, it sounded so glowing. 10% gap up, uh, sold hard all day. Look at the five minute chart on this. Down, 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 down. People are exiting Mercado Libre. I can't tell you why. I can't tell you that it does trade. Uh, I don't like how it trades. It's, you know, it'll go up and then you'll give it all back. And it happens a lot. Not one of my uh, favorite stocks. I think I maybe only have traded it a couple times, but I just really don't like the way it acts. And that's Mercado Libre. That is the focus list. Let's take a look at um, XLF, first of all, since we got out of that FAS trade. Uh, there's that again. I believe I already showed that. So uh, we sold the BRKB, which was the other half of that. Uh, as it reclaimed the 21, but then broke it later in the day. But if we're not going to be in the short, we don't necessarily need to be in the long. It's not a leader. And they've got earnings coming up. And we were also concerned about uh, their, like a third of their portfolio is Apple now. They own so much Apple that if Apple would have uh, had a bad day, that that would have impacted it. Let's see after hours what is going on with, uh, I don't have a quote on that right now. Uh, so that's BRKB. We added to Uber, which continues to act great. That gap down about 2%, recovered it, closed at the top of the range. Uh, nice stuff there. And then AMD, big move intraday, pulled off the 50-day moving average by the close. Um, big volume. Uh, we'll see if it can hold these gains from today after not having a good reaction to its earnings report yesterday. And that's going to wrap it. So why do we do what we do here at Revere? Why are we active managers? Why don't we just put everybody in a pie chart and kick our feet up on the desk and go golfing? It's because we're dedicated to keeping our clients out of the way of these massive drawdowns that you can get hit, especially if you're approaching retirement. You saved your whole life, gather your nest egg, and an unfortunate sequence of returns can rob it from you if you don't take the next, the right steps to protect it. And if you're interested in this active approach, email me, DonnaRiveraAsset.com, or the phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. Uh, That's 855-732-5932. You can also email my partner, Dan Stewart. He is uh, he takes care of onboarding, has conversation with everybody. Uh, before we get started, his email is Dan at RiveraAsset.com. So remember, it's not how much you make in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. And with that, I'll wrap up Thursday, May 4th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset, telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.